So it's a great, great wagon road distilling Rua single malt. I just haven't had enough single malt, so I'm kind of a, I like American. I want to see another American single malt. Yeah, this one's been winning some awards too the last few years. Um, but I think what you're going to find interesting is there's a lot of similarity to this uh, Driftless Glen we just had. I think because of the amount of uh, barley they have in the mash bill on that Driftless Glen, uh, some of these same notes are going to be uh, in the Rua. But um, this one is, uh, they started that distillery back in 2013, uh, opened up in, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, Oliver Mulligan, nicknamed Ollie, he's an Irish immigrant uh, with the same typical story you see. His grandfather was distilling illegal spirits in Ireland. Uh, down <laughs> here, probably. Yeah, well, they got busted uh, by the police, apparently, in 1953. And, uh, over there, raided, took his steel, all his stash. Uh -huh. um, but Oliver moved here and uh, kind of took up his uh, grandfather's tradition. Um, mm -hmm. So Rua is Gaelic for redhead. So I feel like we could be, there needs to be some gingers uh, reviewing this, but um, we'll have to bring that up next time. Let's see yeah. if I can get a hold of Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, it's all 100% organic, uh, two row barley. Uh, they use for the mash. Um, they barrel it at 115 proof and then it gets cut down to 92 proof in the bottle. Um, spends typically about 15 to 16 months aging and they use 25 gallon barrels uh, with a number three char and instead of uh, chill filtration they just use a paper filtration on it so oh. what they consider a, a gentle filtering process um, they're using hybrid stills it's a thousand gallon still and they say they can pump out about 55 barrels a month but that's not bad yeah it's not bad at all. Well, that was the other thing. Driftless Gun actually does have a decent amount of barrels on hand. They're about up to about 5,000 barrels aging at the moment. Where, so wow. they're a, a tiny bit above a, like a little craft distiller. They're they're trying to make, like I said, the, at their five-year mark, I think they decided to try to make a move and kind of head in a certain direction and kind of led up to that pretty well. But still, you know, that's pretty decent for any distillery putting out putting out that stuff, even for this. Right. I'm getting like a some type of berry cream in the middle of this nose, and I can't pick it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get I get like uh, granola with uh, with with cream on it and apples. Say apples. I'm getting apples right now. That was one of the first notes I got of this was like a, a baked apple pie. Yeah, yeah, I can see and, that. And roasted nuts. Yeah, yeah. There's a. Uh, for me, the, the nuts come across almost like a, a praline pecan, kind of something that's uh, pecans that are a little sweetened in a way. Yeah, and a little lighter, too, than some of yeah. the other. Yeah. I wanna, and it sounds weird. I want to say it's like a very, there's like a hint of strawberry, like cream mixed in with like the apple. And I know you might not be getting this. probably just me because I'm crazy, and that happens when you're ha sniff sniffing whiskeys and having them a couple after another, but. Well, that's the objective fun of it, right? Yeah, there's just like a, a diff, another sweet note, that, and that could be like the kind of sweeter kind of pecan or praline kind of nut, like a candied nut, but. Yeah. And like a little bit of baking yeast. Yeah. A that, little bit. On the tail end for me, it was a, uh, I get this kind of fresh baked bread note to yeah. it. That, yeah. Yeah. Not not on the top. You got to dig for it a little bit, but it's there. Hey, Ed joined in. Yeah. Hello, Ed. Hey. Yeah, it's good to see you here. Ooh. Yeah. Well, this uh, the not that I want people to go and not it's not my honey hole, but not that I want people to buy out stuff from Sealbox, but Rua is what brought me there because I was trying to find it. <laughs> And they had it and they had a good price and they also have shipping specials and other stuff going on. But, uh, but yeah, they, they had the Rua and then um, after I had it, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm partway through it, I guess you'd say. <laughs> so I had to get another. Um, yeah. I'm, it's, I'm getting there as well. Uh, it's, 
it's just really, I mean, it's nice and it's, and especially with the taste, it, it's like you, you wait a while and it's like, well, where's that coming from? <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, it, it's yeah. weird. It's, it's, it's not, it, it's not so much layers. It's like waves of flavor that come yes. through on it. Ah, and it's, it's time. so cool. I mean, and it's not, this is not an expensive whiskey. No, it, it's like, man, if you guys are doing this, this is great. I can't wait to have some of your other stuff. I'm totally getting like what you were saying. It's almost like a, like a half baked apple pie with yeah. some of the other notes in it. Like that, that bready note is, I, I fucking love it. We're past that five minute mark. I, <laughs> that is, that is really nice. Like a lot of times you don't Tourette's get Tourette's is engaged. You know, it, just, it won't happen all the time, but I mean, it's, uh, it can slip through now. It's okay. <laughs> But yeah, that is, I mean, a lot of times you don't, I don't, I like, you get like a little mm. yeasty note, but not like an actual, or mm. like on one time I got like a banana bread, but this is just like, like a nice baked dough. Yeah. All right, sir. So I'll have a drink, sir. Do it. Mm. Oh. Yeah, you're right. That is wavy. Oh, and for all the stat horse, it's 46% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Oh. And it's sticking around a while. It has, see if I can get it up here. It yeah. has some really nice legs on it. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Um, that, that are sticking around there, and it does on the tail end here. It is really hanging out, so. Yeah. The taste I get up front, I, get, I had, I had to. Uh, uh, sweet vanilla and then oak and an apple filled bear claw pastry with nuts. And then I get an, uh, an apple juice aftertaste. I get a little bit of like a clove in there besides what you're saying, kind of halfway through, but not, not very heavy. It's more on the sides of my tongue, but that was a really nice description of it from what, from the bear claw with nuts. is. Yeah. That's that's really damn close. I like that. Yeah, that's about spot on. I get a little uh, like if you have black tea with a uh, heavy with honey um, mixed in. That's that comes in about mid palate to me on this. I just had it. I was gonna say beginning, but then it kind of it does hold on to midway through with that little bit of honey. Yeah. Wow. Okay, for for a single for an American single malt, I'm dramatically pleased because i'm i'm afraid of all the malts from scotland be getting like becoming overpriced shortly right to the point where i'm like ah no i i'll pass unless it's something i haven't had or want but this this type of thing really makes exploring american single malts like i'm i'm in i'm down yeah, we'll, yeah. i'm more than happy to explore all sorts of different regions and whatever these i'll have to look into what, what else these guys do because well, interesting to me, oh. where it, you know, this is this the bottle I have is 15 months, and they usually go about 15 to 16 months for aging. That's it, it. doesn't taste that young. I don't get the green, the green, green note yeah. that you really get from a from a whiskey that, that that is that young. Yeah, not at all. I would I would have guessed four or five years because I didn't get a single ounce of that. Yeah, so they must be picking nice barrels that where the woods dried out outside or just try it out for a couple of years rather than a little bit because they're 15 using, months, that's pretty kind of ridiculous. They're using Kelvin Cooperage, which, you know, pretty well known for their barrels. Um, but interesting experience I have with this, Mike, I don't know if you experienced this with your bottle. I don't know how you guys feel about the whole idea of neck pours. You know, if they're not as open as what you typically get. But when I first bought this bottle, walk into a local store, have a little section where there's uh they have some local carry local distillery saw this for the first time this past year thought oh that looks interesting i'll pick it up you know nice price um came home that day from work opened it up and poured it and i could get nothing off the nose i mean it was just dense a little bit of sweetness and that was it and same thing on the palate i let it sit 20 30 minutes came back opened up a tiny bit more but nothing. And I was thinking, crap, I've just thrown $35 away. You know, this is just, there's nothing here. And, uh, 
took another pour the next day, decided to come back to it, opened up a tiny bit more, but not much. And then, so I let the bottle sit for about two or three weeks, came back to it. And all of a sudden it was just this incredible, lovely, uh, you know, all the notes that we're talking about here. Yeah. It's just continued to open up more as I got in the bottle, but that was one of the most dramatic experiences of the neck pour that I've ever had. I mean, it, it was so dense. There was just almost nothing coming off of it. But I want to say I had it as, as intense as that, but yes, I clearly think the first pour or two off of, off of it is not exactly the same, you know, and like, it's, it's, a, I almost always take like two drinks and then cap it and come back to it a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, the apple notes to me are really starting to leap off of this. Yeah. Oh yeah. And almost yeah. like a, a richer ripe apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then like then like an arrow one, almost like a little bit more aged one. It, it this is really really nice. I'm I'm digging yeah. this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a I this is a steal at the price. Um, yeah. Um, Shh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't go to seal box. Don't go yeah. there. We'll, yeah. I'll go there myself. <laughs> I want it to be I'll, there when I go there. I'll make sure everything's cool and I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Cause yeah, even the, even the like light bready note on the end has like, you said bear claw, I get like the hint of frosting, like the sweetness over the top of it and yeah. the rich apple. Yeah. This is, I am really half blown away, especially when you said 15 months. Yeah. Like that's, really screwing with my head right now when I'm sipping this. All I can say is it's got to be the 25 gallon barrel using the smaller barrels. Um, but even still to get, I don't know the kind of age that this has on it. It's to me, it's stuck. Yeah. yeah Cause you're getting all the rich notes and if you're getting any type of barrel notes, it's just like a little bit of spice on the back end, but or yeah, like yeah. Cedar, and it's nominal. Yeah. They're there. I mean, every, it everything that they're doing they're doing right and it which was that was another reason i needed to go get another bottle because because i knew that it's like all right if if word gets out <laughs> about these guys i i'm it, i'm not going to be able to get another one at, go, at least at that price yeah it'll go from 40 50 to 74 <laughs> yeah which which is still i mean it's 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 oh. good i mean for the for the price of it it's i think it's a steal it's it's really really yeah. nice yeah not that we're telling the people at Great Wagon Road to jack up the price or anything. Yeah, but do, yeah, do not. You, you have some room and leeway if you would like to. Yeah, you know, put a couple pumps yeah. on the lever. No, they're they're a couple hours up the road, so that's the distillery. I'm really I've really got on my list to go visit this coming year. Hopefully, within the next few months, be able to take a trip and and check them out. Uh, that is totally well worth it. That is. Yeah. 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 Uh, that, you know, with Sealbox, I think you can ship. I don't know if it's anywhere, but you can. You just can about. Up, yeah. Just about. Like, so if anyone watching, you can pick up a barrel from there or like one of the ones from Driftless Glen, like we're talking about. It's making it very accessible to everybody, which yeah. that I thank them for. Yeah. Well, and, and, yeah. go ahead, Mike. Oh, no, I'd say not, not, not that I want anyone, you know, to go out there and go buy the stuff that, that I would like to get, but. <laughs> They did because two they ha they carry two or three of the whiskeys that are on Whiskey Advocates Top Twenty, and they were they were doing free shipping on any of those bottles that you bought. So, yeah, yeah, you know, they they seem to be pretty cool about hey, you need to know about this stuff and you need to go get it, and and I've I've not been disappointed about a single thing that I've gotten from that place. If you're looking for some to explore some nice craft distillers that you can't typically find in your area. I think it's a great resource Yeah, for me yeah. here in South Carolina. It's very difficult to find anyone that ships here and they do. And so that, that's a big plus. That's just nuts. I, I, I got to commend them because if they're, they're doing exactly what they say, they're going out and finding interesting things and being yeah. like, Hey, everybody check this out. And this, hell, this is well worth it. The last one too, yeah. It's not a hundred percent up my flavor profile. I can totally respect it, um, especially with it being well under what it was proof wise. But this is, I think this is hell. If someone was drinking single malts, this would be a nice introductory whiskey for a lot of people. Yeah, like because yeah. you're getting a lot of really nice, rich but not bold flavors, and it's really married together well. And you don't always get that 
like the barley note as friendly on this. I'm, yeah. Yeah. this sorry, is, I poured more. I'm sorry. <laughs> I went back to it. <laughs> no, I'm, this is a very yeah. friendly whiskey. I think this was a great yeah. stroke for somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone's asking about this, would be one that I would like on Friday night when I hang out with my friends. Some of them, two or three of them, are on to kind of sniffing and tasting and stuff a little bit more. You know, I got two or three that are still wham, you know, and they'll take, they'll take it down. I don't begrudge them. You know, every, you know, everyone gets there at their own time. And, and I can tell that I've figured out their flavor profiles over time too, even though they're like that, like afterwards, it's like, Oh, you're Irish guy. Even though you do that, I can yeah. tell by your reactions and what you say, you're still Irish guy and you're definitely not Isla guy. And <laughs> yeah, but this, this, I, I think they would, they would, uh, no matter tasting or drinking or just or downing it, they, I think they would destroy the bottle of this in a night. Is this <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's that good and that easy you could, but at the same time, there's enough complexity for somebody who's, uh, you know, more intermediate or advanced in whiskey to really enjoy this. Um, yeah. You know, I like a Glen Libby 12, which to me is, it's very simple. It's easy for somebody to get into, but it's also so simple you can easily forget about it. This has yeah. has more complexity, in my opinion. Yeah, more to yeah. all. Yeah, the the at the layers on this are beautiful. Wow, way yeah. to go, great wagon roll. This this is I ooh, I love yeah. it. This is nice. Mm. that is friendly as hell. I'm sorry, I, that's one of the more surprising ones I've had lately. Like I had the Caval single barrel, and that one had I'm not used to mango. Or some like weird fruit flavor in it, and like that was you know, like took me down a turn. And I was nice too, but that, that was just a a unique flavor profile. Yeah, this yeah. is like this is almost like comfort food, like really good layered comfort food. Where it's like, oh, I wasn't feeling, you know, it, I was feeling iffy, and you have a drink, and you're like, oh, I'm feeling at home. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. lovely. Yeah, it, it's not. Yeah, it and it's to me, it, it's one. I, I can't really have anything after it just because I, I know that even after I've like, you know, I'm a few minutes after having you know, my last drink, it's like, Oh, now I got that. You know, it's just, it's just really weird. It just, it keeps coming in waves of stuff. And, and it's a, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost, it's almost cost effective to, to have this because you're, you're not going to, you're not going to slam it. Cause you know, once you experience it, you're like, Oh, Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll just have this and I'll sit here and this is just, it, it's, it's really, it's a, it's quite an experience. I, yeah, I, I do, like I do like it. Like you're saying with like the oils and the oils that it had with the legs, it does stick around for a while, Yeah, but it's not like, it's a very light, like to mid range sticking around, like as far as heaviness. So some other ones are like kind of grabbing you when they right. stick around for a couple minutes this is just like really easy sticking around. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nice. But to me, there's also, there's a little bit of a, a tannic dryness to it that, uh, again, just does not belie the age. To me, it's something I get from a much older scotch or something that's had mm -hmm. a little more barrel time. Yeah. than something like this. Yeah. There's, I, there's, there's, I mean, really almost every whiskey that I have, I think about if, if it's not a higher proof, I think, wow, I wonder what this be, would be like at a higher proof. And I do not think that about this whiskey. No, I, I, I don't think, man, this, I wonder what this be like at 65% because I, I really, it, it's, it's just about right. I mean, everything about it's just, just right on the money. And yeah. Arthur, they get distribution to Texas right now. They're in eight States. I think is the last I saw listed mostly, um, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, Missouri, and Texas. So those are the yeah. places you can currently find it. Yeah, Arthur, I would I would grab this in a heartbeat. That, yeah. that is tremendous yeah. for what it is and the price. That that puts a lot of things puts a lot of things down. Yeah. <laughs> it, shame. it does, yeah. It you know, the, the thing that I found with this one too. It, it it cuts through the water. It takes more water to get this off my palate than, than other stuff. Yeah, because it, it, it's just so it, it's so oily, and I don't know if it's the it's that fruit heaviness and, and you know like 
uh, or like if you have an apple pie, I mean, it stays with you for a long time. It just, it just really goes back. It goes, you know, through your system and this, this comes back out. Left all of a sudden. <laughs> all, of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden. Oh, hey, Scott, how did that happen? <laughs> Scott just jumped in from my bourbon journey. How's it going, Scott? We're, uh, we're talking great wagon road distilling that you can get from seal box. And I'm going to say it is, it is totally worth it after what we've just, what we've just had yeah. here. This is, this is fantastic. Yeah. Mm. And like you said about the eight, the alcohol content, I would not screw with this at all. This is one of the few that you like hit and you're like, yeah, yeah. People don't, I don't even want to put a drop into it. Yeah, no, they're, they, they nailed it. They completely nailed it. Yeah. This guy's good. Cause I mean, it's like, like you said, my, almost everything I try, I always wonder what's this going to be a cast strength because yeah, that tends to be my preference is higher proof, but this one, this is one of the few, but I'm like, don't touch this. This is freaking right. Yeah. 